Hi, my name is Michelle. I flip furniture and in this video, I'm going to show you my five controversial tips for flipping furniture that I wish I'd known before I started. And hang around to the end because tip number five is going to be the one piece of furniture that I think is overlooked yet has made me thousands of dollars in my time flipping furniture. Tip number one, look at your profit per hour. Now, I think this is something that is overlooked so often where when we're flipping furniture, we'll look for the pieces that give us a higher profit, but not look at how many hours we're putting into each piece of furniture, which is so important because let me give you an example. So this dresser I picked up for $28.50 from a thrift store and I put in approximately $50 extra worth of supplies. And when I'd finished, I sold this piece for $450, which I was very happy with. And that gave me a profit of approximately $370, which is a great result. However, I spent approximately eight to 10 hours on this piece, which means I was making on average $35 to $45 an hour flipping this piece, which isn't bad. However, if you look at this dresser that I picked up, which was overall in decent shape, all I did was clean it, fix up a couple of little imperfections, take some photos and relist it. I bought it for $200 and sold it for $450. Now that gave me a profit of $250. If you just look at pure profit, you might go the $250 dresser isn't as good as the $370 profit dresser. However, this dresser here that I made the $250 profit in, I only put one hour of my time into it, which means I was making $250 an hour flipping this piece. $35 to $45 an hour versus $250 an hour. I know which one I'm gonna pick every time. Both are great results, but looking at how many hours you're putting into each piece can help you choose pieces that are going to give you that higher rate per hour for your time, which is so important. Tip number two, don't sell low priced items. Now this might seem a little counterintuitive because you might be like a low priced item, there's more demand, more people are gonna wanna buy it. It'll sell quicker. However, the reason I don't like to sell low priced items of furniture, and what I mean by that is under a hundred dollars, definitely under $50, is because I find that you still have to put the time to take photos and list the item, which is what you're gonna have to do for a high priced item versus a low priced item. So you're putting in a lot more time by say listing 10 low priced items versus one higher priced item. The time that you would have to take all the photos and list it is more in the lower priced in total. And while I tend to get a lot more messages on the lower priced items, most of those messages are people just saying, is it available? And they're not really super interested in it. So it takes me a lot more time to respond to all of those messages versus a high priced item. And also, I don't know how else to say this, but I find people are much more flaky on picking up a lower priced item. So what I mean by that is with lower priced items, I will have so many people say, yes, I'm gonna pick it up at this day and time. And then they'll just not turn up. So that's an inconvenience. Whereas I find with higher priced items, not only do I make a bigger profit, I don't have to spend as much time responding to messages because I find while I get less messages, the people that do message me are legitimately interested in the piece. And when they commit to picking it up, almost every single time they will show up and majority of the time actually buy the piece. So these are the reasons why I personally suggest not to sell low priced furniture. Tip number three, show imperfections in your piece. Now what I mean by this is I sell mainly vintage pieces. So they do have some areas of wear and tear. And I always make sure to very clearly show that in the photos that I put in my listings. Now, why would you do that? You might say, because you wanna show your piece in the best light possible. However, first of all, I like to be upfront and honest about what the piece looks like. But also you're setting up the expectations of the person coming to see the piece. 
if you set high expectations, say it's in pristine condition, and then when they get there, there's all these imperfections that you didn't mention, people's expectations aren't being met, and that's when they're unhappy and less likely to buy the piece. However, if you are clear in your photos, go, it's overall in good shape, but it does have these small imperfections, people are okay buying furniture with imperfections. They just wanna know what they are. And if the listing matches what it's like in person, they're much more likely to buy because it's matching what they think it will be. And most people, when they see a listing, they've kind of decided in their head whether or not they're gonna buy the piece. So if it matches what you said it would in person, they're much more likely to buy it. For example, I had this dresser, which was beautiful. I loved the wood grain on this. And it did have some pieces of missing veneer and there was also a leg that had some marks on it. So I very clearly took photos of these and mentioned it in the listing. And I had a lady come buy it for $350 and she was so happy with it. She absolutely loved it. So I find being clear and upfront with what your piece looks like, listing those imperfections is the way to go and it helps you make your sale quicker. Tip number four, don't buy free furniture. Now, I will put a caveat on this, that if you're starting out and you don't have any money to invest in furniture, this can be a way to build up a little bit of cash so you can invest in those better pieces. I did pick up this dresser for free on Craigslist. Just clean it, take photos and sell it for $50. I did pick up this dresser on Craigslist free and sell it for $40. So this would be a way to you know, build up $90 to perhaps buy a better piece of furniture or to buy some supplies to flip furniture. However, once you're past that early stage, I suggest do not buy free furniture and this is why. I find going back to that profit per hour, the amount of time you usually have to put into a free piece of furniture to then be able to sell it again means that you're not making a lot per hour of your time. For example, when I was starting, I picked up this dresser. It was free. I did pay $20 to have it delivered. It didn't fit in our car at the time and the guy that was selling it was happy to deliver it for 20 bucks. So I took him up on that. I painted this dresser white. I changed the color of the handles from silver to gold. I spray painted them and I added some mid-century style legs on it. And it looked pretty gorgeous at the end. Um, however, with supplies for those legs, the paint, top coat, I was, I had added approximately $80 worth of supplies to this dresser. Meaning, including the $20 of delivery, I was in it for $100. And I sold it for $250. So I made $150 profit. However, I put in about 10 hours of work on this dresser, meaning I was only making approximately $15 an hour for my time. This is why I suggest not to buy free furniture because it usually requires a lot more work to get it ready to sell again. And it's usually not worth it for your time. All right, now if you're still with me, thank you for watching. We're about to go on to tip number five, where I tell you the piece of furniture that has made me thousands of dollars and is usually overlooked. But if this has been helpful so far, if you could hit the subscribe button down below, I'd really appreciate it because it helps me out making these videos. Tip number five, sell accent chairs. Now, what do I mean by accent chairs? I mean chairs like this, like this, chairs like this, and like this. And why I absolutely love these chairs is because usually I only have to put an hour of my time into them and I usually make approximately $100 per hour flipping them. A couple of other reasons I love them is that they're easy to move. I can move them around by myself. They fit in most cars, perhaps not sedans, but they do fit in most crossover vehicles, SUVs, trucks, even hatchbacks if you can put your seats down. They're usually easily and readily available at thrift stores, on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and they also sell really quickly. Most of these chairs for me sell within a couple of days, a week most. I don't tend to put a lot of time into them. What I do do is I vacuum them I clean them with my Bissell, which is basically a little machine that helps me clean fabric. 
If you're starting to flip furniture, this would be my suggestion on one of the first tools that you invest in because I have used mine so much. <laughs> I'll link the one I'm currently using down below if anyone's interested. So after I've cleaned and vacuumed them, if they have what I call a grandma skirt, I'll rip that skirt off to expose the legs underneath or sometimes it's a swivel rocker mechanism. Just because I've found in my market, it gives them a more updated look and people tend to like that more. They sell quicker and I can sell them for more. But what I love about these is it, what I said, the profit for an hour of my time. Like for instance, this chair I bought for $5 and sold for $125. This set of chairs I bought for $21 and sold for $300. This chair I bought for $37 and sold for $250. This set of chairs I bought for $25 and sold for $250. So you can see the profits that these make. They're super quick and easy to flip. They sell quickly and it's the piece of furniture I think is just overlooked especially when you're starting furniture flipping. I think it's a great one to start with. So I hope these five tips have been helpful for you. If they have, again, hit that subscribe button down below and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.